Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. And tonight, our guest is John Bailey. There he is. Hi, John. Say hi. Uh, hi. I'm okay, great good. to be here. Okay, good enough. All right. <laughs> and we got lots of other great stuff to talk about tonight. If you've got a question for John about all the cool stuff we're going to talk about, go into the Facebook chat room, because that's where the chat room is now. And you can pose your questions there, and Jeff Holman is sitting in the chat room, and he will get that question to us so we can ask John a little bit later in the show. So stay There's tuned. Also a chat room and YouTube. That's right. Way. You all set, it's George? Working. We're working. Yes, we're ready to go. All right. Time for voiceover body shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive, from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are the guys. Hey there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS. BS. All righty. Well, welcome to another week and all sorts of cool stuff that we're going to talk about. Our guest today is John Bailey, the epic voice guy. We're going to talk to him in a couple of minutes. But, George, you've had a week, haven't you? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I know it looks all tropical and sunny here. It's all green screen, kids. Actually, no, I am actually, actually am now You're residing actually in, in Maui. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I had to make a very rapid change of residence from Topanga to uh, ended up ended up in Venice. So, um, yeah, I, I I'll talk about later by why I would not move to this area if you are a voice actor. But it is a nice place to live if you're not. <laughs> Fortunately, you're just an engineer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I've been having a week too. I I've, I've been getting really klutzy. You know, I'm not sure, you know, it, it either I'm getting sick or one of my legs is longer than the other or something cuz I keep falling over stuff. You know, I nailed my arm on the side of the house. And So you caught that new one of your legs longer than the other itis? It is. It is. So mm. so uh but you know, it's just me getting old, I guess. But I fell over the weekend too, but yeah, I won't show you where I got hurt. Well, I've I've seen where you've gotten hurt a few times. <laughs> where you, you, you have those videos where the camera is going like this. I do. I... <laughs> it's not, 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 it's exciting to watch, but I'm sure not exciting to feel. Anyway, driving my girlfriend who <laughs> discovers the scars on me. She always. Gives me... What? How did you do that? Man, she hates it. <laughs> it was a war. Anyway. <sighs> anyway, we got a great guest tonight, and there's really only one way to introduce him. You got to see one of the latest things he does. So roll that, Sue. Think big and play small with the massive yet miniature world of microzine. Perfectly proportioned vehicles with daring detailed designs that are supremely small but stores some serious speed. A colossal collection of cars of all kinds. Where do the magically minuscule microzines live? In the completely connectable world of transforming microzines playsets. Hundreds of vehicles in a whole wide world of connectable playsets. The original microzines, vehicles, and playsets sold separately. Let's welcome to Voiceover Body Shop one of our good friends, John Bailey. John, welcome. Hey, hey! All right, good to see Putting you, man. Putting the BS and VLBS. That's right. Uh, that's an interesting. We were listening to that. How did you do a, that particular voice? I mean, that's very, very totally fast. different. That's that's how I did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's 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 
the legal speak at the end of the commercials that has all the yeah it's that the whole way through the the, the spot and i was honestly like there's no way because <laughs> it was just like i'm terrible at doing the you know the really fast micro machine man type speaking right and i was like there's no way i have a shot at this i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go through it because it's micro machines i grew up in micro machines you so remember those commercials. Do it. yeah so yeah. i just blew through it it took me a good few tries to get through the whole thing without any mistakes and unlike most people that would have gone line by line like we actually did the final job i did the whole thing from beginning to end and i would go all the way through it until there were no mistakes yeah from beginning to end because then you're I a knew purist it would you're like a jazz musician that way and it would be less edits and less worrying about cutting sure. and that. so it took about it took like between seven and ten tries i can't remember exactly but seven to ten tries i sent in like one read i take i take that back i think i sent in two reads one was just a little more just fast just me the other one was more like what they they asked for an actual impression of you know john machita jr yeah so uh, i gave him two takes of it but yeah that was i'm, I'm watching <laughs> I, was, I'm, I was shocked yeah. i was shocked that i got the job i was really surprised <laughs> that what happened uh, well it, it helps if you can do that kind of stuff you know trying it to does. you know i mean it always you know always doing the tags is always like you know i see if i can read it and do, like they do it in the, in the commercials and then it's like that's fine. Well, see, this is this is the one where it's just voiceover only. Right. And the other spots, they deep faked my mouth over the kids in the spot. So they had to record me on camera doing the lines that fast in person. Oh, weird. To, yeah, it was that was a lot more work than normal. So I had to go through it really fast and like and be sync recorded it. at the same time on camera. And they had like I had to shave like really close. They had to put like the dots. <laughs> so it's yeah, it was that was no a lot way. Wow. And we had to time it exactly to the kids in the spot saying it, but with my voice saying it. So yeah, it was yeah, it was a lot of a lot, a lot of moving parts. Uh, Boy, since I don't watch many cartoons, I don't see those commercials anymore. Yeah, it's, I I haven't seen it myself in person. A friend of mine that I went to school with like tagged me. She's like, "Is this you?" I'm like, "Kelly, where did you see that?" She's like, "Oh, we saw it on Boomerang Network." I was like, "I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. All our kids are too old. Yeah, I'm still exactly. asking for the digital assets so I can share more of them on social media. But so yeah, far, really, that's the only one I found, and it was it was un untaggable, unshareable because it was considered a kids video. You know. You oh yeah. On new rules. <laughs> yeah, we have to do that with I, us. Is this intended for kids? No. <laughs> it's I can. I can. It's teach safe you enough to... for kids, but it's not intended for. Or that's right. You can't share it if, and anything else. And if kids understand anything we're saying, then we're really. There's, there's a it. trick, John. It's called Firefox. And if you use Firefox, you can actually, there is a way to rip video right off the internet. Oh, really? Remember, you mean Netscape? I, I think I still have yeah, that. Yeah, Netscape. Five, five. <laughs> the latest Firefox. It's got somewhere around there. Netscape, yeah. Netscape <laughs> 737 version. Or whatever it is. Yeah. So, John, what has your life been like during all this nutsiness? I mean, you know, you've you got your family with you. You're You've been locked away for a while. And how's it been going for you? Years. 20 years, life sentence. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, a lot more of the same. Uh, I think, if anything, this lockdown proved that I did not have to come to L.A. to be able to work. <laughs> <laughs> Just in, in time. There, yeah, you, good, you finally figured that booth. one out. Yeah, exactly. Anywhere with a good booth and a good internet connection, and you're good to go. But a, a lot of the, the, the stigma is that you have to be in L.A. in order to book the kind of job that you book. And I, I get it, but at the same time, we have proven – We've been forced to prove it that it can be done on long. I've been doing a lot of work with Sfera Studios, uh, mainly through Verite and um, Verite and who else? Um, I can't remember the other studio. It's they they used to be over in uh, in my neck of the woods and then they moved, but I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Anyway, so but both of them do Netflix dubbing over so shows, which has always been an in person thing, right? And now they're using that same software that you when you go into the studio and you see the the movie or the show up on the screen and you got the the lines and the beeps and all the different ADR parts. Uh, they do all that on your computer now through Zoom. You allow them to control it. They take care of everything. You just perform. So, yeah, it can be done at home now, too, which is interesting because that was always in studio before this. Yeah. Well, you, have you been, like, yeah. dubbing foreign films or? Yeah, dubbing foreign films or just doing ADR pickups for, you know, English films that needed you know, there's also animated stuff that's that's being dubbed, but mostly, yeah, dubbing uh, dubbing foreign films into Netflix English Netflix uh, audio. Hmm. But yeah. It is a it's a gig that ADR is is tough work. <laughs> yeah, because you the, the screen 
uh, has the, the 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 subtitles on it. So you're reading them, and they they change color as you're reading them through, and that's supposed to help you keep in time. Sometimes that's not always, always accurate. You have to watch the mouth movements at the same time you're performing. At the same time you're trying to get the words correctly. At the same time you're trying to say it in the amount of time that the person on the screen is saying. And that's a pl- I mean, it's a lot of stuff going on at one time, and it's not something that you can just walk into a studio and just be like, oh, I'm great at this. This is the one <laughs> yeah. that you should freaking study for. You should go to classes. Johnny Gidcombe's a great ADR loop uh, loop group. Uh, coach it's worked on tons of big films marvel and fog like a lot of big superheroes a lot of stuff that everybody would know and uh yeah it's i i took two classes i think before i actually did it for real and even the first time it was still a lot to get used to now having to do all that at home is even more complicated because now i'm not in the studio where they can just be like oh hang on we got this you know right now you know it's my computer and if my com- and this this actually happened this past week i had to cancel a session at 15 minutes for you Apple users out there, maybe I'm not the only one that happened to, but 15 minutes of terrifying nightmare where I was supposed to jump on right 15 minutes before the, the session started. And they decided that iOS needed to be changed from Mojave to uh, the Car- the Catalina wine mixer. And that <laughs> caused a huge error for, for my my uh, my iMac and everything crashed. Like I couldn't even get it. It loaded for like 20 minutes and just would not get past the load screen. I wow. thought it was broken. Oh. I was like, well, we'll charge you a hundred bucks to look at it. It's going to be this much. Of the... It'd be cheaper just to get a new one. I look at the new ones, like thirteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500. I went home and looked at some YouTube tutorials and figured it out for myself. So if, it can be done. It's, it's so, any, so you can, if you want to get it done, <laughs> go to YouTube. It's always there. Exactly. I, I did have to cancel. Thankfully they rescheduled, but that's like voice actors. Worst nightmare is a tech crisis, mm-hmm. like 15 minutes before the session starts. Mm. I'm just glad it was a cool client. <laughs> I've, yeah, I've really. never had that problem. Are they getting cooler? That's the Let's only put it time in 12. Well, I won't say that. I, I have had some technical issues that have happened in the last 12 years, but that was the that was one where the, the the computer full crashed right before an actual booked session. Other times it was like you had some auditions due and some other stuff, and the computer kind of craps out on you. You have to go get it fixed. They're like, oh, and then, crap, and then you get flop right. sweats, and the flop yeah. sweat goes into the keyboard it's, and yeah, shorts it's, it's out. It's different when it's like, fire. oh, crap, I yeah, can't work exactly. for a couple of days. When you don't have anything scheduled to do, just auditions, you might lose out on some stuff that you're trying out for. Right. This was already a booked session, already scheduled and done deal. And 15 minutes to get things, you know what I mean? I'm like, crap, ah. Yeah. Do you think, <laughs> I mean. That doc, with that doc brand, like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if, how many of these sessions you've, you've, you've been dealing with from home, probably a lot, but I mean, do you feel like they're getting a little bit cooler? Are they getting a little bit easier on you guys in terms of, you know, if things don't go perfectly well technically? Uh, this is the first time I've ever had a problem with it. Usually it's, yeah. you know, a couple little clicks and we're good to go. Usually it's stuff on their end, like, or they need me to just adjust a level here and there. Yeah. Nothing has ever been major. I mean, usually, generally, probably less time than we set up for this show. <laughs> and we're just like, we're going. And I usually blow through mm-hmm. it pretty quick and they'll they'll tack on additional stuff because I get done like 20 minutes early and like, oh, can you do the voice of this guy and this guy and this guy? And, so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I know that I'm, Sometimes I'm fighting with Talk myself. to my agent. Yeah. 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 Well, they can they can do up to three voices for a session without, but if you go over that, they chart they they actually will pay you more. But it's, mm-hmm. it's still it's it's work. It's uh it's for me it's a good practice for what I'll have to do eventually if I want to keep getting into animation and things that where it's already completely finished and you have to you know animate that right. as well. Well, you've but, been doing a lot of gaming lately, haven't you? A lot of gaming voices. Uh, I've booked quite a few games uh, since lockdown. One of them just came out, Marble Knights, which uh, you guys all know Christina V. She's wonderful. She uh, was the casting director on that. Um, well, that was a pretty cool. That was a pretty cool gig. It's a lot of fun because a lot of ball jokes, <laughs> really, <laughs> really dumb puns, and I'm all about puns, which is hilarious. But yeah, that's uh, that's on the Apple Arcade right now. That's pretty cool, and uh, a lot of Elder Scrolls Online. I'm not even sure. I think I'm in pretty much every chapter in the last two or three years. <laughs> but Elder Scrolls is always really kind of uh, fun. They're, uh, Verite is a really great studio to work with. They, they've worked with some of the best, and I love working for those guys. Yeah, I mean, are those yeah, usually... Sessions at home, that's all done the same way. Yeah. Are they usually directed sessions for those games? Yeah. They're always directed sessions. They're always, they're always this way. Uh, it's not as much... There's, there's more them recording me now. I'm using Source Connect a lot more than I did before. I'm using uh, IPDTL more than I did before. I had those things just in case I needed them because they were both affordable. It's, might as well. I mean, they both cost together what, you know, less than what one job per month would, would cost, you know, or pay. So I figured it'd be good to have them. But man, as soon as this thing where it was like, oh crap, we're not leaving anywhere. If you didn't have a boot, a lot of voice actors just started scrambling. Like we didn't have, we weren't physically, financially prepared. We didn't have all the tech we needed to be able to do the job at home. Yeah, we I know. had all this set up, you know, <laughs> and so it was like, I'm right. I don't really, but then I had to get better at IPDD on Source Connect, which I was not super familiar with. 
thankfully, usually those jobs, the engineer takes care of everything. So, yeah. Yeah. Once again, if you're just joining us, our guest is John Bailey, the epic voice guy who's been very busy. So it sounds like the pandemic hit and nothing changed for you, except that you're uh, home a it lot. Got, it got busier uh, for <laughs> work, which yeah. was, that's, it's weird. It's out of, that's out of the normal for me. And that's a positive side effect of the coronavirus and quarantine lockdown. Um, so, but I, I've heard that from quite a few other people. I've, I've heard both. I've heard people whose just work just, you know, it just stopped having had auditions in weeks or months or whatever. And other people had the same thing as me where it's, they started getting more because they were looking for people who had booths already set up and already had the tech ready to go and everything. It was like, you know, we're, we're, we're good. We've already been doing this kind of work. We've already worked. The only thing new that I hadn't worked with before was Farah. Sphera was the first time they've taken that tech of dubbing ADR looping and put it online, kind of the way IPDTL works. Yeah. Luck favored the prepared. Yeah. That's what that Oh, yeah, was. always. Dude, you know I mean, what I mean? I'm glad I, I, I'm glad I had two options because I, ha I still had the walk-in closet if I had need needed it. Um, but having the booth, I just wanted to have some. I told Dan this when he first set, set up my, my <laughs> closet. I was like, I want to have something that looks good, though, even though I don't need it. I need it to look good because I do a lot of stuff on camera. I do a lot of social media stuff. TikTok's freaking exploded for me since quarantine. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I went from, I went from, shoot, before quarantine started, I think I might have broken 100K or so. And I'm almost up to 400K since that happened. So. Whoa! Uh, five months. Amazing. Now, what do you get out of TikTok? I mean, it's fun. You it's would be shocked what do you get and out amazed it? at all the jobs that I have gotten and the networking. I'm, I've, I've uh, connected with Fred Stoller. I'm sure you guys all know Fred Stoller. He's done. He worked with Debbie Derryberry on cartoons like Oswald. I do a very good impression of him. He's been in shows like Friends. Ray, he's worked with Ray Romano. He's a very distinct way of talking. <laughs> and he's like, I, I find somebody that I'm a fan of or like, and I'll make a comment. And I'll catch a live stream. Be like, hey, maybe I can help you with some TikTok pointers or whatever. Frank Caliendo, we, like, we text now. like We're best buddies. Like the Frank Caliendo. So you've really parlayed like, it into more work. Yeah. You yeah, really yeah. worked movie, it. There's movie directors. There's producers. There's show writers. There's not a, very many voice actors on there, which I keep trying to like get people over there. Well, I know where I'm but going there's, now. There's already there's already a fan base for something that you've worked on out there, and most voice actors just have to get on there and go, "Hey, I did the voice of this thing," and then next thing, you know, <laughs> six hundred thousand views. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I told, I told Debbie that. I told Steve Bloom. Like, there's quite a few on there now. They're like, "Oh man, there's all these views just came to us." Like Rob Paulson's first video went viral. His first post before he even learned to change his username. <laughs> 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 Bob like Paulson one six six three D eight yeah. Yeah. nine. It was user one seven seven five three thirteen. You know, and he had like two million views on his first post. So, like I said, well, you know, it's like a virtualized uh, Comic Con now. I guess almost in a way. It is. Well, it's it's because it's expanded from what it was, which was just you know lip syncing audio, to a creator place for people who are tired of the way YouTube has treated you know minor creators and they're not. If you're not a celebrity or a big studio, YouTube is kind of like Meh. I get I still get copyright ID strikes for content ID stuff from videos I posted years ago and they're saying, well, this thing right here is. And yeah, honestly, right. I'm tired of freaking fight it anymore. <laughs> I'm stupid tired of fighting them because yeah. I mean all the views are gone. Would go you know, and right. usually I get hit with the content thing right when it first comes out, right when all those views are where the where the big views come the most in right. the first week or so and then by the time i get the rights back to it oh sorry we all watched it already <laughs> so tiktok's a play i mean i i'm not a fan i'm i i like this format better guys i'm not gonna lie i like boxes this way not this way the whole vertical thing is stupid you can quote me on it but that is the way that think that's the way the cookie crumbles and that's the way i yeah. i follow where the stream goes that's what you have to do in voiceover man you have to keep finding where the where the current's going and jump on board. Absolutely. Once again, we're talking with John Bailey, the epic voice guy. If you got a question for him, because I got lots of questions, but I'm sure you have a few, because he seems to be really spreading himself out, almost like manure. It's uh, yeah. Well, I do, like I said, I put the BS and VLB. In. You That's are right. in the right place, my <laughs> friend. Yeah. Feel free to toss a question into our chat room on Facebook, and uh, we'll get to that in the next segment. So, so John. Your superpower is the ability to to think fast. It sounds like your brain that, is, you said it was. Is, is, is constantly <laughs> rolling with oh, something. I said it's just talking in general and never shutting up. I well, I, I'm sure. But um, <laughs> what goes on when you're in your head when you're like 
you know, when you're looking at copy and you're like, oh, OK, what can I do with this? Do I just just pop into your head? Do you pre-plan all this stuff or just is it just like. No, I don't. I don't have time to be to pre-plan that much. In fact, I used to. I, I, you probably have interviewed at least hundreds of people that are really good at accents. They can just pop them right off their heads. But there's so many accents out there. There's so many. There's so many in our own country that it's just impossible to have all of them memorized where I can just flip through them that quick. So right. I started cheating and using things like dialectarchive.com. So that way I have a quick reference because I can get right into it once I hear it. That's not a problem. But having it memorized where I can just flip it out all you know that quickly, it's just a lot to remember. So I, I have some basic concepts that are kind of you know foundational ideas in my head for a lot of different things. A lot of stuff that I've learned from different coaches, from different teachers, uh, the pre-life and post-life. And I take just bits and pieces of it and I make something cool out of it. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't go exactly with what it says. Uh, I don't completely change it either. I don't want to change what's written because you don't want to offend the writers and be like, well, he doesn't think my script's worth reading. So you, you don't want to alter what the script is saying. You don't want to change a lot of words around. Just little bits and pieces. And if you can find uh, a spot in there to slip a little something funny in or something interesting in or something that makes your audition stand out above everybody else's, and you probably heard this a million other times, that, that's what thinking outside the box is. If you do exactly what's written down, you're doing what other, the other 100 people that went before you did. And they're going to get so tired so quick of hearing the same exact thing. And they said, I've heard this multiple times. They said it's, it's scary similar how many voice actors sound almost identical to each other. Yeah. And I get that they're, mm. all basing, they're all basing things off the same script. But the guy who doesn't sound like everybody else is the one that's going to get the job. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and that's the thing. I think a lot of people probably have a lot of fear about veering off the script not realizing exactly, that yeah. that they're you know because someone's listening to all these other yep yep yeah same is thing is it veering off thing, the script thing. or is it veering off the here here's where the call fear the comes direct yeah. direction yeah the, the fear is that if i improvise too much they're going to think oh this guy thinks they're funny ha 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 and they're going to just be like hard to work with they're always going to be trying to come up with funny stuff and i've i've mm. been accused of doing that before because i mm. tend to get the more nervous i get the more you know, jokes I make. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very hard, you know, you have to rein yourself in and just do just little teenie, tiny bits. You know, the first taste is free. Yeah. And then after that, you know, once you get the job, then you can kind of, I, I just started kind of putting feelers out. Like I feel the audience, you know, I consider the people that I'm working for this. I, I'm still enter entertaining and performing. It's reading the audience. Yeah. So it's reading, reading the audience, audience that you can't see. You have yeah. To so I'm looking know. through the glass and listening to what they're saying, how they're acting. If they seem pretty square and straight, you know, beep, bop, I'm just, you know, let's just do the job and go. If they're a little loosey goosey or I'll slip in a little, Hey, would you mind if I try something a little early on in the session just to kind of see how they react to it. And if they say, like, no, let's not do that. Then I'm like, okay, so no improv. But you know, you can do it without being like, hey, welcome to party tonight. Don't forget to tip your waiter. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you don't, you don't mm -hmm. want to go. That's, that's the fear. That's where the fear, the fear is like, mm -hmm. oh, they're going to see me as this funny improv person who can't do a script. And they're not, they're going to be like, I don't want to work with that guy. They'll be out of control. And right. that's lost a lot of people the job because that's true. They walk in the thing and they just like, oh, I want to show off how funny I am. You want to be able to show that you have improv skills without looking like all I can do is improv and that's my thing and I'm just going to do jokes all day long. So yeah, you'd have to be wow. very careful with the balance and just little teeny sprinkles, like dropping a little salt, extra salt on your food. Salt you know? bay. Yeah. You do put too much salt is bad for you. A little bit of salt tastes great. Yeah. Yeah. I see that occasionally on auditions. It's like, you know, use your improv chops. I'm sure, you, you know, you see those. Yeah. Sometimes those they'll actually put it on there like, hey, improvise people. <laughs> yeah. In other words, the script's not very good. So do the do the best you can with it. And... We did our that best. Now you do yours. Because I know a lot of people that don't do good at improv, and I feel like that terrifies them when people are like, "Oh, just have fun with it, you know, do whatever." But right. they're like, "I don't know how to have fun. I just want to do the job and get hired," you know. <laughs> but their focus is wrong. They're looking at getting the job instead of having fun and just performing and doing what they said. Have fun with the script. They don't mean play around and, and then you'll get the job. Just forget about the job part. Forget about that part. They're just saying, here, have, here's a script with some words on it. Play around with it. It's a, it's, a, it's a sandbox. It's a toy box. Play around with it. Have some fun with it. Send us back what you made. They're giving you a box of Legos and letting you be the master builder. So you make something cool or funny or unique, and that's how you get the job. That's all there is to it. You just have to forget about the fact that this is a paid job and trying to please the director or the casting person or whoever it is or the booth director. Just like, oh, I hope the booth director will submit me. All those thoughts are freaking just roadblocks in front of your face. And if you can just forget about that, concentrate on the toys right in front of your face, have some fun with it. Nine times out of ten, that'll end up getting you the job. It does. That's what's worked for me so well. Do you feel, 
I, you know, I hate to be ageist, but do you feel like when you see how young they are, do you know you can play with them more? Or does it have It doesn't anything matter to, to me. It? I just look at everything. As a, as a, <laughs> I mean, every character is a character. I just, I know if they're very specific, like we want to sound, have somebody that sounds like they're naturally 15. I'm like, okay, I'll pass. You know, I don't sound, I mean, I can do like little kids' voices, but I don't want it to sound, there's certain shows where it's funny that they don't sound like real teenagers or right. real kids or whatever. And then there's right. other ones. <laughs> Where it just doesn't work, you know. So I yeah, you, you just kind of you, it's it, that's that's the that's the research you have to put into it. You have to look at the script, and you have to look between the lines. Maybe something in the description might give some idea about what vocal qualities that character has. It says something about they left they live on a dust planet. You think they're going to have a nice smooth silky voice living on a dust planet, or are they going to talk like this because they've been breathing dust their whole life? You know, like people do around here when the Ides of March kick all the freaking smoke around. Right. Mm -hmm. Have you and Scott Park and ever been in the same room? Scott Parkin, yes, multiple. Times. <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine what that must be like. The two of Everybody you trying to Scott compete Parkin with each other. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Scott's awesome. He is. He's you know, a, I see Scott because he's so tall. I just look for the hat floating above everybody. Else. Right. I'm like Richard Epcar. It's just like they look up in the clouds. There he is. <laughs> titan, the literal titan of the industry. <laughs> exactly. So, so when you're doing auditions and you and you get the script. And I mean, what's your process when you when you really break something down? Uh, OK, so I look at it and my phone I hope so. and I'm like, OK, that's not due till three and it's 11. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go get lunch. <laughs> that sounds familiar. And, you know, then I'll probably, you know, crack open a, a case of aviation gin. It's smooth and delicious. And, uh, you know, no, I, uh, I, I get the audition. And first off, I look at what kind of audition is it? Is it a commercial audition? Is it a cartoon? Whatever it is. Game audition. Sometimes the faster you can get in, the better. I tend to like to put a little more pressure on myself and wait till about an hour or two before it, it's ready to go, unless I have like a schedule already planned out. Like I know I have this to do and this to do, this to do. I'll just find a spot that's free and get it done then. Um, but usually I try to do it once I'm in the creative mood, which sometimes that requires me going off voiceover stuff and creating something for TikTok, which is why I'm kind of so wired right now. I was making content right before I got on the show, which gets me more energy and gets me all like, yeah, let's create stuff and talk about work things. Uh, and when you first wake up and you have an audition due at 10 a.m. and it requires a voice that's 20 years old and you're just like, you know? <laughs> so yeah, it's all about balance. It depends on when you get the script. It depends on what kind of script it is. It depends on you know, the time of day it is when you get it, you know, so sometimes I'll get ones over the weekend that aren't due till Monday morning, but instead of getting ahead of it, so I don't have to worry about doing an audition super early in the morning, if it's for a low voice, yeah, I'll wait till Monday morning because when I first wake up, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to sound like yeah, Kevin Conroy. So, yeah, it, it's there's so many freaking factors you have to take in and you have to remember them all. That's the part that gets hard. I'm, I'm using my phone more for, to remind me of things these days. I know I'm getting old yep it, it and it doesn't get better <laughs> by the way no it only gets worse yeah. and my, the worst part is that kids use me for their memory like they don't remember anything they just make me remember everything for them i'm like don't i have enough to remember as it is <laughs> Jeez. how how's how has home life been i mean because you you home life's been tough i'm not gonna lie uh, do we tell have, we have some some mental health issues in our family uh if you did not know and it's been very hard our autistic son has regressed pretty badly it's been my phone is starting to come down from all the heat this summer. Like I have to restick everything. Uh, so he's regressed a little bit, which has put me in the spot of having to work where normally he'd be at school and I have to keep it quiet. And the booth keeps most of it out because it's in my bedroom, door shut. Then there's another room, then them. But there's all that, daddy, I need to, you know. And it's like every, I know I have only five minutes before he comes back to get this thing recorded. And he's going to be knock, knock, knock. And I, Booth can only block out so much. So, right. Uh, and then there's all the kids are just kind of, they're either mopey or overwhelmed or both because they've never done digital school before and it's very easy to get behind or Zoom doesn't work for them. And they're like, I'm kind of absent, but I didn't do anything. I tried. So there's all this level, extra level of anxiety with the kids and, you yeah. know, so yeah, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> Uh, not to That's mention tough. with the heat that we had. Oh gosh, yes. Up the you know the devil's armpit over here in the valley. Yeah, and that put everybody on a super fun. My my van did broke down last week, <laughs> so thermostat went out because it got too. It was 120 last week or so. Yeah, it's it's kind of fun to watch tomatoes actually stew on the vine out here in the valley. <laughs> All our tomatoes died too. <laughs> oh man, it's it's fascinating. Look like raisinets now. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Once again, our guest is John Bailey, the Epic Voice Guy. He sounds like he's very busy. And again, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room, 
in Facebook, and we'll get to those questions in just a couple of minutes. In the meantime, we'll take a brief pause here so John can catch his breath, and we'll be right back here on Voice Over Body Shop, so don't go away. Before, Before time, time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Look what you made me do. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Okay, you get an audition and you see the dreaded words, accents, dialects. They can be showstoppers. You think to yourself, I can't do that well enough to compete. I'll pass. Well, what if I told you you could do that and do it well enough to compete with all the other voiceover talent in your category? All it takes is understanding how to build an accent from scratch. And the accents class is the way to do it. David at VO Heroes knows firsthand because his coach is Jim Johnson, the creator of the accents class. And registration just opened for this amazing five-week program that will show you how to build a new accent from scratch in plenty of time to submit even the fastest moving auditions. Just visit voheroes.com forward slash accents and check out the training there. That's voheroes.com forward slash accents. Once again, voheroes.com forward slash accents for the accent class. One of the things we like to do on VOBS is to actually use the products that sponsor us. And here's a prime example, the Harlan Hogan V01A Signature Series Studio Condenser Microphone. Why? Not just because Harlan's a sponsor, but because the V01A is possibly the only microphone that's actually designed and built strictly for voiceover. All other mics were designed to record music. It's the perfect mic for us, since we're all about VO. But don't just take my word for it. Here's what another user has to say. After 10 years of use down under, my signature series VO1A Harlan Hogan microphone still sells, whatever my contribution is. It's from your first sale in Australia in March 2010. Stay safe and keep well. Regards, Ian Wright, voiceover artist in Australia. And here's the deal. Prices on the manufacturer of the VO1A have gone up. It'll now retail for $349, but use this promo code and you can get yours for the old price of $339. Use this promo code now and get it for the old price of $339. Thanks, Harlan. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're listening to Voice Over Body Shop, VOBS.TV. And we're back here at Voice Over Body Shop. Our guest is John Bailey, the epic voice guy. Once again, if you got a question for him, Throw it in the Facebook chat room. We know you're out there. We know you're listening. It's very entertaining listening to them and also trying to get a word in edge one. I don't think that's fine. Who's the pro woman that's just so violent around here? What's that? Place them, put them in the chat. You throw them in the chat. 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 Throw them against the wall. See what's there. I got a comment for you, brother. <laughs> so you, you do a lot of impressions. I do. I, who have you been working on lately? Uh, so I, we were talking about this during the break. Uh, I, there's this new app out called Impressions App. Defect technology has been around for a while. But before that, I was doing filters like on Snapchat. There was one called, the app called FaceSwap. And the technology is finally caught up where it looks so good. But it's, it's safer because the app has a mandatory watermark on it so people can't, you know, do naughty things with it. Right. Because defects, you know, it's, it's kind of got a bad reputation for you know political reasons or for other reasons you know adult national security reason. yeah yeah that kind of thing because they have people <laughs> that are trying to to fake stuff but this one's it's it's all in fun it's all entertainment only the only the only downside is that there's a couple of rules you have to play by like you can't mm. render more than 10 seconds if it's free 20 seconds if it's paid mm -hmm. uh, etc and you can only use the celebrities that are in their list 
-hmm. So I got the ones that I do the best at. And after a, some trial and error, I finally figured out how to do it really, really well. And it's like, it's, it's just, it's, it's freaking exploded all over freaking social media. Like I haven't had growth on Instagram in four or five years. <laughs> and now it's like, I hit 50 K this week and it's already almost at 51. And I just checked wow. it like a day ago. So it's finally moving upward, which is nice. Uh, but there's a lot more to it than a lot because a lot of people were just using it like they used the filters in the old days. They're just coming up and they're either syncing an audio that the original actor did and they're just moving their mouths or they're doing really bad impressions. <laughs> there's a few people that do good impressions on there, but I'm actually making content with it. So what I did is for those of you who are pop culture conscious, uh, I combined cosplay impressions and deep fake and I combined <laughs> them all into one thing. Mm -hmm. So I dress like the character. And then I found apps like TikTok. TikTok has a lot of special features, special effects stuff. And there's one called Face Stretch. So if I find an actor like Ryan Reynolds that I that I do very well with the voice, but I don't look like him, I go in there and make my face fit his face. It looks exactly the same shape. That's how you do. I'm like, oh, damn. And I have to put on a little bit of makeup. I have to. I have very light Just eyebrows. Yeah. So like on the sides of my eyebrows do not show up on on the on the app. So I darken this up with some of my wife's stuff. I call it the the prickly brush thing. <laughs> I don't know what yeah. stuff's called. So I darken the eyebrows a little bit, and then I, do, I put some, I think the other thing's called foundation. Basically just makes your skin a little bit lighter and covers up blemishes. But it helps the, it helps the motion tracking because it literally processes a face digitally over every single frame until it looks like Ryan Reynolds is really talking. So <laughs> all that combined together, and then once it pro processes that, it looks, for, I mean, other than the fact that I'm fat, which I try to use some camera angles to kind of hide that a little bit. And, and I got a real, I got real hair. I got like a real hair off Etsy of all places for like 70 bucks. Oh, you can get anything. I was actually yeah. style. I said, I want it to look exactly like Ryan Reynolds. I held it down, let her cut and cut and style it to fit. And oh, then wow, dude. Together, Man, you, you, I just made a free guy video today that I'm going to post later. So you can get wow. you know, how cool it looks. But once you combine all those things together, it looks freaking great. It looks way better than what everybody else is doing with it. And it looks so much better. Some Somebody shared one of my old Brian Reynolds thing with the Snapchat face swap. I'm like, oh, <laughs> technology I thought back then was awesome. It's so bad now. You know, some buddy of Brian is going to catch this stuff. I mean, oh, no, he's, he's got to. He's oh, he has seen it. Seen and he's it. improved. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he's That's enjoying cool. About Get the okay. doom. Well, well, he Ryan thinks Reynolds he could do a really good impression of me, but let's be fair. I can do both, both voices. <laughs> <laughs> And that's that's also that's important great. if you're you know if you're doing uh, you know ADR and you've got to you know fill in for somebody oh, else. Oh yeah, that's oh. the. I mean, I filled in for Ryan Reynolds for two films and two film sets, two films trailers. Like, yeah. So that that's beyond doing an impression. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's, that's voice that's matching. You, that's when yeah. That's when you get into voice matching sound like territory, where it's it's you're the the vocal stunt double for another actor. Um, but the most I've ever done for that was Detective Pikachu. That was there was just so many sessions. I think they just thought oh, maybe the movie needed a lot more Ryan Reynolds isms in it. And when I finally saw the actual finished film, they cut almost all of it out. So I guess they just like, that's eh, fine. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's a good paycheck for me. In fact, because of that job, I know that you both you both have heard this question. Like, what's your favorite voiceover job? I found my new favorite voiceover job. Them canceling the session after I just left for five minutes, and I still get paid, and I have two free hours. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> Everybody thinks I'm busy. You're officially paid dead. Do for two hours. You're hitting Starbucks. I go to the salon. I go get a massage. <laughs> I go to Steak and Shake or something. <laughs> That's hey, not we, a joke, best man. That's legit. Job right ever. I didn't have to do a squat. I'll come home like, man, my throat's really sore, babe. I think I'm just gonna go <laughs> chill out in the bedroom. <laughs> We got some questions from our vast worldwide audience. Would you like to tackle some of those? Sure. All right. See, again with the throwing and the tackling. Now this is a I, here's a guy. This is here, full here, here. contact talk. <laughs> Madden slipping some Madden. Putting the body and body sharp. Yeah. <laughs> George, what uh, do we the got? The first one comes from our very own chat moderator, Jeff Holman. Is John using the Harlan Hogan VO1A? So, John, spill the beans. This, tell us about your equipment, how much you paid for that's it. That's the same equipment I've had for 12 years. <laughs> I love it. I've replaced this the is, tube. That's this is an it. exact example of that. how you can use the gear you probably that's already true. had. The, uh, the the mic stand is new. I got that at, uh, at uh, Guitar Center. Uh, retirement, final Banjo guitar Emporium. Yeah. Um, but the mic is still the same. It's a Rode NTK. It's got its own power supply. Uh, I think I I sent it back to be re refurbished or replaced because you guys are actually the ones that told me that it had such a great warranty on it, 
they sent it back with a new power supply and a new mic. So it's technically not the same mic. It's just the same mic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the tube went out once. And then the mm -hmm. second time they're like, well, we already replaced it once. So, so the tube was like 12 bucks. And thanks to Dan, yeah. I, I figured that out one pretty easy. Um, oh, I yeah, everything that. else yeah. is just Guitar Center. So yeah. and what's going IMAC, on with it? I've had the same iMac for years, and honestly, I thought I was gonna have to replace that when it crashed on me last week. But you know, it's it's had a cracked screen since we moved in three years ago. It <laughs> fell off the shelf in the closet and landed on the pewter base, which is why I replaced the mic stand <laughs> in the first place. Uh, yeah, but it still works. So everything else is good. The only thing that I've added is that I have Spectrum now instead of uh, the old school days. I think I had, I think I went from AT and T to Roadrunner. Or, Whatever my mm -hmm. other previous cable guy. Uh, What's the mixer or the interface? How do you? Uh, the Scarlet Two I Two is a recommendation by Dan, which is great. Go. I mean, I really don't need two inputs, but you know, right. it's not that much overkill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Keep it simple. It's the yep. only way. Is yeah. anybody listening out there? Keep yeah. playing. This is these these simple. Days, the don't only big investment. It. The only big investment that I think you need to make is I think you need to get really good internet. You should at least try to get the highest speed that you can get because so much of the stuff now is all done through Zoom. It's all done over Skype or whatever, but it's using internet and you're going to need good internet because you have crappy internet. You are not mm -hmm. going to work much. They're going to do a test too before they hire you. They're like, we're going to do a test run, see if it's okay. Every single studio I've worked for, uh, 2K Games did a test, Blizzard did a test uh verite mm -hmm. did a test uh every single person everyone has done a test the day before to make sure that the internet quality and everything is going to go smoothly so if you don't have good internet you're not gonna be able to bs your way around it see that through that no question this thing. that's why we have that's business right. class in here <laughs> you know you know 500 up and you know or, or yeah. 20 up and 500 yeah, supposed down to, and... I, i'm i'm paying for 300 up but lately it's been throttled. I think it's because I got four kids on four laptops. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. School at home, and I, you know, I try to tell everybody to keep their phones off the Wi-Fi, but I have a feeling there's probably like eight or nine devices all on the Wi-Fi. My wife's wife's watching Voodoo or whatever, or Hulu or Nunu or Tudu or whatever they're called these days. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, so we we try to turn things off. Well, mainly because we're also trying to conserve electricity too, because electricity freaking five hundred dollars a month. <laughs> if you're using lots of it so air conditioning yeah, yeah that'll do it you and i've got it cranked up to 82 and i still have a high bill oh geez mm -hmm. not good Next uh one. glenna siemens has a question i can't wait to hear the answer for this uh, it's uh <laughs> what what do you suggest for newbies during this virus especially us old white ladies <laughs> Oh, well, new this is old the, white ladies. This is yeah. an excellent time. Is that to like learn. new old stock? This you know, is an excellent tubes? time to learn. This is an excellent time to get things done that you put off all the time, like getting your demo updated. I put that off all year long, knowing that I should do it at least twice a year. And I sometimes I want I'll go through a whole year and not have time to get it done because I know it's going to take me a little time. I know it's going to take. A, but now we have time. Get that. Get your website updated. Get your social media brands updated. Update your resume. You probably have newer stuff now than you had two or three years ago and you probably haven't changed it in forever so all these things that were on the back burner now you've got extra time to do them you can't go nowhere so i mean you can but you have to wear a mask <laughs> <laughs> the biggest mask you've ever seen the greatest um, mask because quite quite, <laughs> frank, quite frankly the greatest mask people tell me this okay everyone knows it's the best mask the best oh yes Get the uh, presidential uh, one. <laughs> alberto young doe no, uh, or is it do, Alberto Young? young. Do you? <laughs> do. You just never know. I mean, there's no punctuation young there. Do. No, it, it could be young. Alberto Young, though. That's your do name. You, That's a good brand name. I'm going to go with that. Uh, do you young do the Dovio. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> New branding. Um, do you do the same light improv for timed scripts? Uh, hmm. Sometimes, yeah. It really okay. just depends on the script because you really don't know if it's timed in the auditioning process. You have no freaking clue. Your job is to get the job first. <laughs> so then you can worry about improvs once you actually get to the studio. Right. If right, it's very, right. very short, cut and dry, and they have very limited time, if you can squeeze something in there or just say, hey, let me give, you know, like I said earlier, like, hey, would you mind if I try something? And if it doesn't work, they'll let you know. And then don't do it again. You know, just don't keep like, let me try one more time. Let me, you know, they eventually I'm like, okay, this guy is like, let's figure it out. So yeah, don't don't overdo that. <laughs> so it's a can, case by... If you can try, it, it, it's best to play it safe and don't do anything that you think might buck the system. But see, a lot of people are just too scared to ask, and that's the biggest problem. Is if you ask, they're fine. If you just ask, they're the worst thing they'll do is say no. 
If they say no, move on, you know? Yeah. Uh, if they say, yeah, you know, then you, that instantly tells you, okay, so they're open-minded and they're kind of cool with you just kind of playing around with this because they want, most people, they want the best job possible. They want the best they can possibly get out of it. And if that means that you can come up with something funny or add something funny to it, then they want to do it because that'll be better than what they have. And if you're just going to be by the script, by the book, I mean, there's a million other people out there that can just do what's written out on a piece of paper. Darn good point. Yeah. Patricia, Andrea, uh, could you ask if they recommend a specific mic for female voiceover? Oh. Well, that's more of a tech Kind of a tech question. Thing, but... question there. Yeah, I, I don't mean, have a clue. I've been using one mic for twelve years. How do I know? <laughs> well, since it's there and I and I read it, I'll say the Vanguard V4. That one hasn't v sounded bad on anybody yet, so I'd give that one a try. You can sure. always like custom pink paint it or something if you really want to grill. Really, you know, if you want to be a female the mic, the dazzler. You can be dazzling. <laughs> yep. I've seen a lot of crazy stuff. I've seen guys actually taking their mics apart. Sanding them, you know, like car body style, like redoing their whole, you know, to make their whole studio match one cut, like Iron Man, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> theming, theming yeah. I'm like, geez, that's a little. I just want my mic to work. I don't give a crap what it looks like. It's probably a urine stain still on it from my old studio. <laughs> I was in the bathroom for so long. <laughs> Pretty sure the ammonia is probably permanently rusted. The first little parts of it. those particles are tiny, but eventually they grow. Those road techs that taking the thing apart. Oh my god, look at this thing. <laughs> um. Jay Sawyer. Now there's a name I haven't heard in a while. This is, uh, Jay says, are you suggesting to at least uh, on the second read a style that's different from the given direction? Yeah, I hear this one a lot. So yeah. my normal audition style, it, it depends on how much script there is. If it's a short script, especially, especially if there's very little script to do, you should do more than one take or two takes. You should do at least three takes because if they're only going to give you one or two lines, you're, you're, you're wasting an opportunity to show them I can do more than this. You know, I can do a lot more than this. So I, I feel like there's a, there's a couple little tricks that I do. Uh, one is I audition in character at, for my slate because that gives you an extra two or three seconds of a character voice that you can show off what you can do that's not written down in the script. And I always try to go with my, like, what I think that they're looking for based on their description for the first take. The second take is all instinct. It's just whatever feels right to me, but it has to absolutely be completely, they all have to be completely different. If they're too similar, don't even fool, don't don't fool if, you, if, if every single take and you listen back to it like you can't tell much difference just tick, pick the best one and submit that one if you can do very three three very distinct things in a row and for the third take i just go i go off there hail, hail mary completely insane stuff and sometimes that'll be the one that ends up getting the job because they just weren't expecting it uh i've you've probably heard this story before uh, Rob Paulson's told this a few times and, and talking tunes and other places, but I, I always use this as an illustration when I'm coaching because I think it's such a great way to think about when you audition because they don't always know what they want when they're doing the auditions. They haven't made up their minds. They haven't heard. They're, they're listening for what they want. They just haven't heard it yet. Originally on American Dad, the goldfish was supposed to be German because, you know, Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Rob is there to read for the goldfish and D. Bradley Baker sitting there right next to him. And the, D looks over, he's like, you got the goldfish? And he's like, yeah. He's like, I, I don't do a good German accent because originally it was calling for a German. He's like, well, what Rob says, well, what do you do? He's like, I do a really funny French accent. He's like, well, do that instead. Or no, it was, originally it was French because what's more un-American than French? Right. So he said, I don't do a good French accent. He's like, well, what do you do? He's like, I do a really good German accent. So that's how they ended up <laughs> making the fish into a German fish because D did such a great job with that that accent which is nothing it wasn't even written down that way it was only it was written french so you just never know it just it depends they'll know what they like once they hear it but thinking outside the box is, has almost always gotten that person the job sometimes they get hired because they are who they are like it's oh it's dave Fenoy. you know of course they're mm -hmm. just gonna hire dave Fenoy because he's dave Fenoy. other times they don't really know what they're looking, listening for until they hear it excellent point. damn straight yeah all right, this one's from, uh, uh, let's see, let's do, oh, Peter Ponce. Ponce, yeah. Uh, wow, he's Ponce. a Marvel character. Peter Ponce, yeah. Uh, is epic voice something that you've always naturally been able to do, or is it something you've had to develop over time? Yes, when I was three years old, I was in a world. <laughs> yes, he popped out of the womb. In a world, wow. <laughs> Where one baby just was born. Uh, rated R. Uh, so, no, I have not always done the movie trailer voice. So when I was... When I was a teenager, I guess 13 or 14-ish, uh, my brother 
introduced me to Pablo Francisco's stand-up comic. Uh, that yes. This, this whole bit about Little Tortilla Boy. And mm -hmm. he's like, I bet you could do this, this movie trailer voice better than this guy does. And I've always had a very good ear. And when I listened to it and then later on heard the Geico commercial where Don was physically in the commercial, mm -hmm. you know, her car was totally underwater. You know, that mm -hmm. was the one where it's like, oh, that's the guy. That's what he looks like. Yeah. And I started and I listened to, to that and compared them. And I realized that Pablo was actually mashing uh, Don LaFontaine and Hal Douglas together into one voice. Right. And so I started, and that kind of got my like, well, what do they all sound like? Because I know there's only a handful of guys that do the trailer voices. So mm -hmm. I just started listening to them and kind of figure out each one of their styles. And each one had kind of their own genre. Like how Hal Douglas was the movie romantic comedy, The Odd Life of Timothy Green, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Mm -hmm. And Don LaFontaine always did the, you know, the, the really raunchy comedies or the Terminator 2, Judgment Day. And, you know, yeah. Hal Smith had that little thing that he does at the end of every sentence, you know, so everybody had their own thing. And once I figured out the different parts to that, I just started working on each individual one. And then I made this stupid little video for the Internet that got quite a few views. And then my first manager uh, was looking around the Internet after Don had passed about a year and a half later, I think. And he found my video because Google had pushed that up the search because it had so many views, which is how social media works. So the higher your stuff gets viewed, the more likely people are to find it, which is why I suggest people like voice actors get content out on social media. Yeah. Find a thing that works for you because you never know what might lead to a job, representation, other stuff. Yeah. So he's like, I think you have a lot of raw talent. Started working with me for my own specific, you know, John Bailey voice, which is this, you know, me. And that's where, you know, my version of Epic Movie Voice came from. Yeah. Well, John. called that. Yeah, we, we got about we got about two minutes here. I, I figured we'll put you on the spot here because we need some new bumpers for the show. Uh, <laughs> Did if, somebody rear end you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel your pain. My bumper's pretty cracked, too. Yeah, yeah, I got a brand new car, so stay away from there. Um, so if I throw you a celebrity na uh, name, can you, like, give us, like, I'll do my best. Ten seconds? Sure. I mean, you've, you've always done Christopher Walken. I, I got to have a new one of those. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm rolling over here on the roadcaster. Okay. Hello. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. It's a place where you can get your body shopped with voices. Come on. Look at Dan's head. So shiny. <laughs> <laughs> There's one. Yeah. Oh, look, your microphone appeared as if from nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, De Niro? Hey, listen there. Wait, I'm. Wait, wait, wait. We'll wait till you roll, okay? Rolling. Oh, roll. all right. We're rolling. We are rolling, people. We're rolling. You tell me when you want to start, huh? What is it called, huh? Voice over what? Body shop? Is that what this called? It's called voice over body shop. Bob's? What kind of? What the hell kind of word is Bob's? Huh? Is that what you want me to say? F hey, fuck you and the Bob <laughs> you rolled in on, okay? I'm out of here. I did not pay enough for this shit, okay? <laughs> all right. Well. That's a wrap. We'll make that work. <laughs> uh, playing a character. I don't normally curse. I, I, get one more. Uh, <laughs> get 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 one of your classic epic voice guys yeah, in there. Just just a generic, you know, kind of tag too. Rolling. In a world of voices, one place wasn't Vo Buzz Weekly. Voice over body shop, the better one. <laughs> You're, trying to, you're just trying. Hey, they haven't had me on a guest in two years. Well, <laughs> damn it. Time. Now they will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now they'll never Or, or not. Yeah. <laughs> I'll redo a different one. Don't let it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Go for it. Hi there. How are you? Putting the BS in VOBS. It's Ryan Reynolds here saying, aren't you glad you wore your brown pants? It's voiceover body shop. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Brown pants? That's improv for you. What yeah, the hell? Really. That's a Deadpool one. Yeah. Oh, it is. Okay. You watch yeah. more pop culture. Yeah. John, oh, it go. is always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you, but it's also a pleasure. Yes, I love to hang out here in my own house. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for having me here in my own house. Alrighty. Being here in my own house. All right. So <laughs> so they're going to see you on all sorts of stuff, and you're still doing the, the, the uh, Honest Trailers? And yeah, still hanging in there on Honest Movie Trailers. Not so much for the games anymore, but uh, that's, that's that's something that happens. All right. You mentioned coaching at one point. Are you, yeah, are you I do looking for I, people I've to had coach? to go uh, up a bit because I just don't have that much free time, so it's like two hundred yeah. an hour now because just availability is really short. So sure. I've been well. having two or three students a week, and it's <laughs> – an hour at a time, that's three hours, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, crap, I need to slow down. <laughs> there you go. John Bailey, everybody.
All righty. We'll be right back to wrap things up right after this. Yeah. yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Hey, it's George, and it's time to thank our great sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source 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 the Tech. Wow, <laughs> Take two. George the Tech and Source Elements. We're two different businesses, believe me. Um, these guys created the Source Connect software, and it is, I mean, it is happening. It is really the software that's taken over the remote studio world. Yes, there's other technologies out there. They're going to be used for different niches in the voiceover world, but overwhelmingly it's Source Connect at this point. That's the one you need to have in your studio to be ready for those, basically the best paying gigs, frankly. I mean, that's, that's where they're being recorded. If there's a studio hiring a production team and an audio producer and engineer, they have a budget, they're hiring the best talent, and that should be you because you'll have Source Connect. You'll be ready to do those jobs. I'll stop rambling. Just go to Source Elements, sign up, get a 15-day free trial, watch my George the Tech video on how to use Source Connect so you don't have to email us and ask us how it works because you've watched the video and you're ready to go. So anyway, that's the ad. We'll be right back. <laughs> this is the Latin <laughs> Lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. And we're back here on Voiceover Body Shop. At least to say goodbye and rack it up for Tech Talk coming up, uh, which is going to be Tech Talk number 42 next week. And we got a lot of other great people lined up to be on the show uh, over the next couple of weeks. But John Bailey, fascinating to hear how he has learned so much about our business and how to, you know, and I'm glad he was able to impart I've that never seen a bigger sponge. No, it's, that's a big, wide-open sponge. Who are our donors of the week? Donors. We have donors. Larry Hudson. Yay, Larry. Uh, Diana Birdsall, 949 Designs. That's Lee Penny. Lee Penny. Uh, Brian Page, Stephanie Sutherland, Patty Gibbons, my dad, Don Griffith, and Martha Kahn. All right. Yay. Yeah. Thank you, Martha. Yeah, you can still join our mailing list, too, on our homepage where it says Join or subscribe. Uh, we've got over 700 uh, people on that list now. So they get awesome. They get all the information before everybody else does. 
Uh, and uh, eventually we'll be back, and then we'll go back into other people's booths. So send us your pictures of your booths. Again, in landscape, not in portrait. Uh, yeah, we can't do them right now because of COVID. Right, exactly. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Makes no sense. <laughs> it's like, we'll just wear, you know, I, we just have to wear a mask when we have those on. <laughs> well, it's time to thank our sponsors as well, uh, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. CEO Heroes. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. All righty. Thanks to Jeff Holman for grabbing all those questions out of the chat room. Mm -hmm. And uh, on, on Facebook, by the way, I, the, chat, the old chat room's gone. But Facebook, it seems to work fine because everybody. Yeah, and there's there. this other one on YouTube. It's not so busy, but there is one there, too. All righty. And, of course, our technical director, who's got a bit of a migraine, but she's pulling mm -hmm. through it. Sue Merlino. We love having her Bug here. Sue. And Lee Penny, of Bug course, for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. And uh, thanks again to John Bailey for joining us. And thank you for joining us here. And uh, it's important to know that this is not an easy business. But at least when it comes to George and I, it's important to say when it sounds good. It is good. All righty. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Stay tuned for Tech Talk. We'll be right there somewhere sooner or later. Right, right everybody? There.